Hello guys, so welcome back to Photographics Academy. Alright, so today we're going to be transforming this particular background. We're using this one right here. So if you look at the image, you're going to notice we source a plain backdrop. So we'll try to move the lady and put her in this backdrop and blend it in and see one or two things we can do with it. So without wasting much of your time, let's quickly get started. And the beautiful part also there is that you are getting this background for free. So go to the description of the video so that you'll join our Telegram community where we'll be giving out this background and a whole lot of other things for free. So first of all, the first thing I'm going to do in this image is to crop it first. I need it to be the same, you know, cropping ratio with the backdrop so that the whole thing fits in and we don't lose a lot. So I'll crop it and give her space. Something like this. Pop it over here, bring it down a bit, give our space upwards and turn on my content aware to make sure that Photoshop helps me fill up all these areas. So I'll press OK and wait for it. Now our selection is done. OK. Oh my God. I thought that was a reflection. I would have actually loved it because, you know, I want a reflection over here, but it's a mistake. So let me just quickly use my Olucanal Lasso tool and fill, fill it up, content aware, yeah, yeah, this, press OK. So let's see, beautiful, so it's gone. Now, the next thing we need to do is to separate our object from our background. But before we do that, let's crop the background as well with the same ratio so that we'll make sure that we are not losing any part of it. I think this is enough, we don't need so much foreground, just keep it this way. So that once we place it over our image, it looks like fit skin. The adjustment we're making wouldn't be much. All right, so quickly separate your object from your background by clicking on your quick selection tool and go to your select subject. So wait for Photoshop to do the job. And once that is done, right click and go to select inverse. So the reason I'm selecting inverse is because I want to cut the background out, not the object. So the select inverse means my background is selected. Yeah. So I'll make a duplicate of my background layer. Right, click on it and go to layer there cut and it's going to cut out the background from the object. Then I'll have my object on the topmost layer and my background that's my, you know, cut out background on the layer in between them. Now it's time to drag in my backdrop. So I'm dragging in my background into my object, not my object into my background. If you can tell me the reason I did that in the comment section, you will be getting a gift from us so i'm going to unlock the background pick up my move tool and just drag it over here place it over my object so you notice that immediately it's trying to fit in it's easier to fit it in like this than bringing it in uncropped or not cropping your object is going to make you lose the whole backdrop so i'll hold my alternate and just scale in and immediately I have something I can work with, so I can actually just place it like this and we're already working. But if you look at it, the perspective is not really looking so right. So we need to scale in a little bit now. Yeah. We have that in between her hands, something like this. So we'll make it look like it's flowing out from her hands like that. Beautiful. So I'll scale in a little bit from here. Good, and this works for us. So we'll press enter. Now, the next thing is to blend it in into our main background. How do we do that? Change the blend mode to overlay. Very important. So by changing the blend mode to overlay, you notice that the shadows we had in our background originally begins to show up. I guess when we had it in the normal. But now, if you look at this image, it has a reflective surface because the background we have here have even the pots reflecting down there. And to make the whole thing look realistic, we need to mimic that particular kind of effect. So what do we do? We we'll create a reflection of our object on the background. How do we do that? Go to your object, press Ctrl J to make a duplicate. Then go to the layer down, press Ctrl T, right click and flip horizontal. Then flip vertically. So the legs you match. So just drag it all the way down. Place the legs to be touching each other like this. And you are good to go. 
Now, if this was a shadow you are creating, you will just hold your control and stretch the perspective. But well, this is a reflection, so press OK. Now, what is the reflection looking like? So we'll have a blood out reflection that is more detailed towards the end and we are losing it at the edge. So what does that suggest for us? Yeah, I know what you are thinking. It suggests tilt blur. So we'll go to our tilt blur and use it to mimic that kind of fading out. So how does tilt blur work? It makes the parts farther away from this particular point to be more blurry than the parts very close to even stay in focus. So everything in between here will stay in focus, but we do not need any part to stay in focus. So we'll just drag it up and make sure that all of them are blurred out, but gradually. So we increase the blur, freeze it, and just find a way to do it like this. Look at my own. So you see, at the tip of the toe, we still have a little detail, but towards the edge, is totally gone. So press OK. Now, the next thing we need to do is to blend it into the floor. So what do we do? We look for a blend mode that allows us to blend it in. Ah, uh, this is not bad, but it's too colorful. Okay, so we'll just work with our darker color. Reduce the feel. Reduce it. Good. We can even saturate it a bit so that its color will also be very, very visible and seen. Look at the way the reflections are saturated, but we need to reduce it as well. So we'll have her reflection on the floor. Let me show you. This is the before. This is the after. This is the before. This is the after. I think it's too saturated, so bring it down. All right. So the next thing we need to do is to create a global color gradient or even darken down the uh, the uh, part of the background so that the image will be the center of attraction. So what do we do? I'll go to my background. Now this is all conventional. So I'll just make a selection of the interior part of this background, just this area. I'll make a selection of it. Please stay on the background. Yeah. So I'll make a selection of this area. Selecting every other area from which I don't want. So just my mouse. So add this area. Minus this part. Minus this area. Add this area. So you can as well decide to add this particular part. Because I feel it's going to give us a very cinematic look. At the end of the day. Do something over here. Okay, so once that is done, uh, this is not entirely perfect, but we can work with it. I'm going to feather it by seven so that it helps us with the edges. Then I'll just create a curves that just been layer in between all of this and just darken it down like this. Then right click, then press Ctrl I to invert that root. So I'll turn everything back on. But now beyond that, I do not want all the background black. I just want the pieces behind. So I want all the areas around where she's standing to be bright. So I'll pick up my brush and also minus that uh, effect from where she's standing. See the one painting it and it's gone. So I just need that effect behind her. So this is what we had the before, the after. So we just have that place dark, but even pushing colors. So the next thing we need to do is to create a global color grading for this whole image. And to do that, we'll just go to our color lookup table. I love using color lookup tables. Then I'll just keep moving them around to find the one that suits. This is actually really, really beautiful for a dark skinned lady. Oh, this is beautiful. So I'm going to stick with this. I'll reduce it that level. So this is what we'll have the before, the after, the before, the after. So we we'll need to bring it down a bit. So I'll get a stamp visible layer, Ctrl Shift up and it's E and go to my filter camera roll so that I'll add a little vignetting effect. So go down to effect, bring down the vignette a little bit. Then go to my calibration, push the colors up a bit. Go up to the basic, pull it down a bit, increase my vibrance, probably increase my highlight or something. I'll even reduce it. Let's see. Because I think my pulling effect is too much. 
take it back to warm. I highlight full load in the top like this. And we are good to go. Look at that. So let me show you the overall before and after. This is the before. This is the after. This is the before. This is the after. Thank you so much for watching this amazing video. Do make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you subscribe, click on the notification bell to get notified every single time we drop a new video. Until then, see you on the next one.